Welcome back to the Price of Business. I am your host, Kevin Bryce, talking to you about you and your business. Always glad to have my good friend Steve Parker on. And uh, he's a political consultant extraordinaire, and uh, he is a senior editor at usdailyreview.com and provides great insight and content over there. I think about a week ago, Steve, uh, we had you on the program talking about what was going to be the uh, upcoming, or actually, uh, we had you on election day, if I recall, was was uh, last uh, last Tuesday, and uh, you made some pretty bold predictions uh, uh, very early in the morning that uh, no one else in media was making. Uh, why don't you kind of recap uh, what you predicted? Well, yeah. So at the time, I, I had predicted that I, I thought David Cameron would would stay on as prime minister. I, I did think that there would have to be a coalition of some kind. I, I did not see the type of numbers. Uh, that we ended up seeing kind of late Thursday night when the elections, uh, when the polls closed over in the UK and, and they started to count the ballots over there. And, uh, I didn't think Mick Clegg would be around. His numbers, the, the, the numbers for the Liberal Democrats who had been in coalition with the Tories, uh, they just seemed to be dropping off and there was a lot of mistrust between people who in 2010 had voted for, uh, Lib Dems and they, and they kind of wanted more of a Liberal government and then the, and then the Lib Dems went into coalition with the Conservatives. So it, it just didn't play well, you know, five years later for the Liberal Democrats. So, um, you know, like I said, I thought I thought Cameron would, would stick it out and, and would be around for another five years. I did not, and just like most people, including the polls, uh, pre-election, uh, I just didn't think that, they, that the Tories were going to have an outright majority the way they did. And, and on election night, uh, you know, the polls closed at about 4 p.m. our time here in Texas, and I was... Following the following the results coming in, and they they have a much different system over there than we have here as far as counting, and uh, so the results were slowly coming in overnight with all these different constituencies over there, and uh, it was evident pretty early on that they had an exit poll that was released uh, right as the polls closed, which showed the Tories getting 316 seats, and as it turns out, they ended up with 331. So the 316 was was at the time when that came out, there was there were people who were saying no way. And as it turned out, that ended up being an underestimate of what actually happened over there. Well, uh, it was incredible. I, I uh, honestly, I, as you and I were talking, uh, I was, I was like, "Oh man, Steve, you really kind of stuck your neck out there." Where I'm going, I'm, we're going to be, you know, probably at your next interview. We won't even talk about the election because <laughs> I only want to do that to you. And, and uh, but sure enough, uh, your predictions were spot on. You, uh, you know, you, you worked uh, so uh, myopic, uh, you know, and you have too much political experience to say definitively this is going to happen. But you were pretty strong on that, and no one else out there was and so uh, congratulations on that and i think it was a very big victory overall uh for those who were strongly nationalistic be you be you uh, scottish or be you british uh, i think it was a very strong election for those who uh, uh are uh, concerned and anxious about what's happening on the continent and i i i think it really generally was a right turn uh for england your thoughts uh, yeah, it really was. And, and uh, you know, this was really the, the uh, British economy has really been turning around recently, and they've had uh, GDP growth that's been better than the, than the United States. Uh, they've had general just economic growth that's about one and a half to two percent better than ours. And so that's a country that's really been turning around. And while, uh, you know, the, the left wing, the, the Labor Party was led by Ed Miliband, who, uh, who ended up being ousted, uh, the, you know, the next day, uh, they they were they were very much uh, trying to drive people into this whole cradle to grave kind of uh, welfare society mentality over there and and it really didn't play well because like I said you know pe- the economy is doing well people are employed people have jobs people have you know dis- uh, money to go see a show and 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 go to soccer matches over there and and uh, you know do the fun stuff and so they just didn't see the uh, the the gloom and doom that the Labor Party was trying to sell. And as it turned out, the Tories and the conservatives, and this is a lesson for the politicians here in America, uh, they ended up being the party of the working guy. Uh, and, and it was it was very, very interesting. If you look at across the pond, you know, I post five or six, sometimes during the election, during the heavy uh, counting days, uh, I was doing seven, maybe seven or eight stories a day. But it's very diverse opinion over there. But the Tories very much became the, the party of the working man, of the, of the party of the family. And uh, you're right, a huge, huge change in mindset, and it, and it could be uh, the way they elect people, they elect uh, parliaments for five years, 
could be a generational thing now. The, the, the Tories have five years to really put to make an imprint, uh, you know, similar to like what Margaret Thatcher did uh, back in the 70s and 80s. No question that under Thatcher, uh, you know, the uh, the perception was is that um, the conservatives were the party of working Brits, and so the problem is is the huge number of uh, welfare recipients uh, there is still rather extraordinary. Um, but you're thinking that uh, the average Brit is is uh, finding more in common with uh, the Tories than they are Labour. Yeah, well, you know, over there they've got a system set up where, uh, like I said in my last response, where the cradle to grave, there are people who never have to work a day in their life over there. And it's really amazing. They're provided with housing and clothing and food, and it's not based on the number of kids you have. It's just based on, on just feel-good policies, kind of the, the politics of good intentions. And, and it's really an absurd system. And, and like I said, there were people who were kind of forced out of that. They, were, they, they, had, a, they had a great... Uh, program about it. and I say great. It sounds cold-hearted, but it, but it really was a great program a couple years ago, where they they made some people come in and prove, you, you know, hey, you've been on you've been on they call it over there benefits. They say, look, you've been on benefits now for several years. You need to come in and prove to us that you've got these problems or that you can't work. And all of yeah. a sudden, people went back to work. And so, like I said uh, earlier, I think people once they went back to work, they started to realize, wow, you know. Yeah, I was given home, uh, given a home and clothing and food and all this stuff, and the government was taking care of me. But when I have a job, now I have more money and I can do more things, and I can travel and I can, you know, you know, just the things you can do when you have dispensable income. And yeah. uh, so it, 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 like I said, it, it's kind of maybe possibly created a a, a different generation of of, uh, of voters and thinkers over there now. Richard Ringer, uh, the great author uh, of uh, uh, Restoring the American Dream and several other books, you know, he used to talk about the uh, quick as hell employment theory, get rid of welfare and watch people get a job as quick as hell. And, uh, yeah, I believe that kind of thing can work. Um, I think probably uh, labor is in serious problem, uh, in trouble. I think their, their problems are pretty, pretty systemic. And in the situation uh, of them essentially being uh, an alternative in Scotland, uh, when the uh, Nationalist Party up there has etched out uh, economic and social policies so similar to labor, but also uh, bolstered by the idea of independence, almost makes labor irrelevant up there. Uh, it really does, and, and I, I'm about to post a little, in a little bit. Uh, I, I'm working on the, the uh, across the pond for for today's U.S. Daily Review, and there's a story that I'm posting from Stephen Bush, who's a who's a uh, reporter over there in the U.K. for the New Statesman, and he talks about how it's really going to be a difficult road back. This isn't one of these things where you can just you know retool here and there again. That they have a different election system over there, and it's and it's different constituencies, and, and the way these guys have to campaign. It's really going to be a tough back for, for labor, and that's why I said earlier, you know, I really think that the Tories have a, have a chance here to really make an impact and really, really make an imprint and, and maybe be in power for, uh, for quite a while, uh, and especially uh, advocating their ideas, conservative ideas, uh, maybe a little bit more liberal than, than American, let's say, conservatives or American Republicans, uh, but really, really good ideas that are, that are uh, you know, getting people back to work and, and uh Getting people back into to church to to get you know churches and philanthropies to take more uh, responsibility for the locals instead of the government supplying the benefits for everybody and so uh, it, it can really be a generational change what we've seen over there this week. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be hard to break, but they they seem to be making progress. And I think you know you can't help but but look sober in a sobering way at what's happening on the continent if you're living in England. And you've seen the trauma of the Euro, and you see all the issues that they're facing uh, because of that um, unchecked uh, socialistic behaviors that they've had as well. And so uh, I think it's interesting, and I think England, the people of Britain uh, are, are probably pretty grateful for the fact that they can uh, look at Europe with, a, with arm's length uh, distance there. Yeah, and from that purview, maybe maybe Labor or or the uh, the Lib Dems are. I mean, they're down to eight seats in, in the in the parliament right now, so they're they're almost irrelevant. Um, although they have seven more seats than UKIP does. Uh, but what you might have is you might have uh, Labor's best shot might be uh, the conservatives, the people who who have the means to leave uh, the area, or, or as you call it, leave the continent. They might leave the continent. They might go elsewhere. They might come here. They might come to Canada. Uh, and and you know, maybe that's Labor's best shot is to get all the Tories out of out of England because uh, because they maybe see what's coming and, and there's just a lot of unrest with the uh, with the uh, unusual things that are going on over there. Got to look it up. A lot on of that. Under control. 
Steve, uh, great as usual. And have to wrap it up. Make sure you check out his latest across the pond over at usdatareview.com. And uh, also, uh, what's your website? Uh, business website is amrenconsulting.com, and amren is short for American Renaissance. So it's just amrenconsulting.com, and they can find us on Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Awesome. Thanks so much, my friend. Great job as usual. Sounds good. Talk to you next time. Steve Parker, senior editor at UFCAVReview.com uh, and one of the geniuses over there. And uh, always be glad to show off uh, when our guys get it right, which is often. I hope you check out UFCAVReview.com, see why it's getting over a million hits a month. And while they're like it on Facebook, follow it on Twitter. And this is the price of business.